Going from 35 millimeter to medium format can be quite a challenging task in and of itself, but trying to figure out which film stocks work best under which scenario is a whole other task to master. Thankfully, because many of these stocks are the same, if not very similar to their 35 millimeter counterparts, and the limited amount of film stocks on medium format make this a more palatable decision once you know what you're looking for. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, Old Faithful, the bread and butter, the Colossus of Clout, Portra 400. So I'm gonna guess that if you're interested in medium format or you're about to shoot it, it's safe to assume that you've shot 35 millimeter and likely shot Portra. So I'll try my best not to gawk over it too much. That being said, it's easily one of the most versatile and forgiving films out there. 400 ISO is a great in-between. It's great for outdoor shooting as well as shooting in lower light. Additionally, for being a 400 ISO film, it has a very fine grain that's barely noticeable when exposed properly. I have to say, this is by far my favorite film to shoot with for pretty much any occasion. It looks great for portraits, landscapes, lifestyles, and pretty much anything you put in front of it. Portra 400 is easily the first film stock that I grab, as it's the most tried and true for me. Next up, the sister of Portra 400, Portra 800. With more low light capabilities, Portra 800 highlights all the great qualities of Portra 400. However, this comes at a cost. The film is much more sensitive to bright lights or sunny days and becomes considerably less flexible than its 400 or 160 counterparts. Additionally, Portra 800, even on medium format, has noticeably more grain. Now, that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, just a creative decision to think about when you're selecting your film stock. By and large, in my opinion, these two film stocks will keep you covered for 99% of scenarios, offering great color rendering flexibility and sharpness third on the list Cinestill 400d for a long time 400d was only available on 35 millimeter but just recently Cinestill started creating 400d on medium format and to say it's been impressive would be an understatement like most color negative film it has incredible exposure latitude meaning that it does very well with overexposing for this reason, I'd recommend airing on overexposing when shooting the film. When exposed well, it has very fine grain for 400 ISO, and like 50D and 800T, it has noticeable halation, which occurs at in-focus overexposed highlights. 400 Dynamic not only performs well in daylight, but due to its ability to be pushed three stops, it performs well in low light as well. It can be shot at a whopping 3200 ISO, a three stop push for easy handheld shooting in extremely low light. Keep in mind though, pushing will increase contrast, reduce shadow detail, detail and make the grain considerably more noticeable. Like most film, 400D performs best at box speed, so I only really recommend pushing when it's necessary. Regardless, anytime a company can continue to create new film stocks on different mediums, they will always have my stamp of approval. Next up, Kodax Ektar 100. Kodak Ektar 100 is an extremely fine grain and sharp 100 speed film stock that is one of the best choices if your main focus is landscape photography in shooting conditions with great light. It features super saturated warm colors that make colors pop, high contrast, and is the closest look you'll get to slide film without actually using slide. However, this comes with drawbacks. Because it is so vibrant and saturated, skin tones tend to look quite red or just honestly unrealistic. While it can be saved in posts, I personally would avoid trying to take too many portraits on Ektar and leave it mostly for those landscapes and lifestyle photos. Additionally, because it is 100 ISO, it doesn't have a great ton of flexibility for those low light or night shots. Ultimately, I think Ektar is probably the greatest landscape film stock that ever existed, but its downfall for portraiture make it pretty specialized and specific. That being said, Ektar, in addition to Portra, is one film that I prioritize to bring with to make sure I can capture those grandiose landscape photos. Fifth on the list, Cinestill 800T. Starting off as a Hollywood motion picture film, over the years, 800T slowly morphed into one of the most popular medium format film stocks available today. First launched to the market in 2012, it has already gained cult status for its dramatic results, high speed flexibility, and iconic imagery. It is highly rated by the community, receiving countless 5 stars from critics from release up until now. Like 400D, one of the large contributing factors to its popularity is the cinematic halations that are especially obvious in the bright highlights. I noticed that many people lean into this and typically shoot this film at night, garnering some really great results. Yet, despite its 800 ISO mark, I found that you can still get some really good photos in daylight. 
In fact, some of my favorite medium format portraits that I've ever taken was actually on Cinestell 800T. Safe to say, 800T, despite being mostly regarded as a nighttime film, is still incredibly flexible and gives some really sharp, great, safe color rendering. Next up, Lomography 400. Lomography is one of the newer film brands on the block, branded as being spontaneous with a candid view on photography with their motto being, don't think, just shoot. Lomo 400 is a workhorse for Lomography, being the most flexible and offering a nice vintage feel while still being sharp with great colors. Surprisingly, I haven't actually shot too much of their 400 speed film at all, but from my experience with their other films, this one surely will not disappoint. Lomo has also reached out as fans of the channel as well, so that's also pretty cool and noteworthy in my opinion. Now moving a little bit away from color is Kodak's Triax. Triax 400 is one of the most popular film stocks of all time, not just in black and white, but of all film. It's known for its classic and absolutely beautiful grain that hasn't changed since 1954, as well as its strong contrast and rich tones. It has amazing exposure latitude, which allows it to easily push up to three stops and also means that it does well with overexposure. When metering this film, like most other black and white film, I highly recommend metering either midtones or shadows. You don't want to underexpose it. Most commonly, this film is used heavily but not limited to portraiture and street photography. While I'm not a huge black and white shooter, some of my friends and online acquaintances have gotten some incredibly timeless photos on Kodak's Triax. And lastly, we needed a non-Kodak black and white film, which leads me to Ilford's HP5. HP5 compared to Triax doesn't have quite as clean of a grain structure, but still gives that timeless vintage look, which makes sense, granted it's one of the oldest still standing film stocks today. It has beautiful, subtle tones, medium contrast that produce great detail in the shadows, and incredible exposure latitude. Also given that HP5 comes in at 400 ISO, it makes for a good all around stock that can be shot during the day, night, and in low light as well. So that's gonna wrap it up for going over some of the best medium format film stocks. Most of them are my favorite film stocks or film stocks that I've seen. Really consistent, uh, reliable, good results shot on them. What are you guys shooting for medium format? Is it one of the roles that I mentioned in this video? For me, like 90% of my body of work is shot on either Portra 400, 800, or on Ektar if I am shooting landscapes. But that being said, I think it is fun to experiment and try some of these other uh, film stocks like Lomography. Tried one of their purple rolls, I think a couple years ago, just to keep it fresh and experiment with some different film stocks. You know, shooting the same film stocks that give you kind of the same results over and over gets a little sterile. So I think trying some of these um, more unique niche film stocks is also incredibly fun. Otherwise, let me know down in the comments what you guys are mostly shooting. Is there any film stock that I should check out for medium format? Or is there anything that you guys are shooting that I didn't mention in this list? I would love to hear it. Otherwise, until the next video, guys, stay safe. Peace out. Keep shooting. Adios. Adios.